it is five o'clock, I'll call the Finance and Personnel Committee to order. Uh, we'll begin with the roll. Alder Lefebvre? Here. Alder Decker? Here. Alder Perella? Here. Do we have anybody online? Okay. Uh, Alder Feldy is unexcused. Mitchell is here. We have a quorum. Will you all please join me in the pledge? allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, then, per usual, barring objections from committee, we'll jump over item number four for the introductions and move on to item five, which is approval of the minutes from the July 8th meeting. Is there any discussion on those minutes? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes. Takes us into item number six, which is resolution number 44 of 2425, a resolution authorizing an amendment to the 2024 budget, reflecting a table of organization change for the finance department and Mead Public Library. Good evening. This item is brought forward to you because uh, finance and the library have actually been going through a trial period um, to see if finance could take on the accounts payables, some reporting, and some receding functions for the library since the uh, administrative services manager uh, left back um, on December 31st. She retired. So finance uh, hired a part-time limited term employee uh, to take on those duties because there was not um, great applicants at the time, so we were trying to see how it would work with finance taking over some of those roles. Um, Director Erickson and I have spoken uh, since this trial period was somewhat over, um, and we wanted to make it permanent because uh, both, from both of our points of view, and he is here to speak on his own behalf if you would like, uh, we thought that it was working well and it would actually create some efficiencies. It also allows the finance department to have a, a second person who knows accounts payable and receding like the back of her hand. So it allows us to have almost a uh, duplicate uh, person if we need it for other finance functions as well. But her main uh, purpose right now is doing the library items. And so this is taking the budget money that was allocated for that services manager position and allocating it enough to cover the part-time person in finance. Thank you. Questions or comments on this one? Elder Perella? I think it's a great idea. I just want to applaud the change. Um, if nothing else, also it brings uh, unity and consistency with the way that the city deals with accounting. So congrats. Good idea. Thank you. Any other discussion? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. That takes us to item seven, which was a direct referral of resolution number 46 of 2425, authorizing a contract between the city of Sheboygan and Tyler Technologies, Inc for purchase and implementation of advanced scheduling and time and attendance software programs. Thank you again. This item is brought forward to you uh, to allow us to enter into a contract for time and attendance and scheduling software through Tyler, who is also our accounting software. Munis, you also have heard before. So it's the same company. We went through three uh, different demos from various vendors who have uh, municipal experience and we settled on Tyler Technologies as being the best option for the city. A big part of that is due to the integration with the system that we already have. So it will actually flow right into the employee self-service module that the city employees are already used to using. The reason that we're bringing this forward is because currently employees are just entering either time. Um, some are entering time as a number of hours. Some are entering time by the minute. Some are entering time somewhat rounded. We don't have rules built into our system that allows the calculations to occur somewhat 
uh, automated. So we're spending a lot of time, our supervisors are reviewing the time, checking, making edits, fixing things. So we really want to create some efficiencies, but also have it that we know that across all departments, we're using the same rules and in the same functionality for all non-represented. We are planning to also have transit union and police union go into the same software. So instead of three different softwares for timekeeping right now, we'll be down to two. Fire department will remain on their normal or the software that they already have because it has a different functionality than um, what Tyler's product currently offers. So uh, human resources and payroll, which is under finance, are taking on this project and we are hoping to have it implemented by the end of this year so that the first payroll of next year for January 1st time would be on the new system. Thank you. Right, questions or comments on this one? Alder Perella. I'm just curious, <clears throat> since I deal with the, with these issues quite a bit, so this is, uh, how do you do that manually right now? So the system, currently you're entering manual entries for overtime, entering manual entries for um, on-call pay, all of those types of things are entered manually into the employee self-service module, then being confirmed by supervisors, and then payroll is also taking a bit of time to review to make sure that we're following the rules that are in our handbook. So it does some of the calculating, but not all of the efficiencies that we would gain from this program. And it would be used uh, citywide. Correct. The only um, individuals who will not be on it are fire union employees. So all the, the represented departments will not be using it? Non-represented would be using it, so any non-union employees, transit union, and police union will all be on the system. Oh, okay. Um, finally, may I? Since it is a big chunk of money, this is a one-time... So, so if you look at the quote, there is the yeah. one-time large setup fee, um, but then the recurring fee is actually quite minimal compared to the other softwares that we were looking at where they were anywhere from fifteen to $20,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Because we have these programs and we're paying for the license up front, it is a lower cost annually. So the big chunk is 98490 and then there is the, the, right? That is the big chunk. That is a big chunk, yeah. and I will... I will say that that is an up to dollar amount. Uh, finance, the um, payroll uh, specialist, Karen Klein is her name. She will actually be starting to work on this as soon as possible, um, which will actually reduce that cost, hopefully, because we will actually be doing a lot of it internally instead of using the implementation team, mostly because I have implemented this before. But one more question, Chair. Thank you. Um, did we budget for this? So we knew that this was going to be coming. Part of the funds come from the IT department where we had money set aside for implementation of new modules. And then transit will be paying for their portion of it based on employee number. And that will be uh, utilized, used within their budget, yes. So it, that will cover everything? Yes, between yep. IT and transit. Okay, thank you so much. Other Decker? Yes, I, uh, so the, how will this exactly work? Is it the ability to use like a, any kind of electronic device to to, uh, um, to clock in and clock out and stuff like that? Is it will it smartphones or is it going to be uh, just tablets or exactly? So all of the above, actually. <laughs> okay. So we're looking at potentially having a time clock for departments that don't have computers, for example, DPW, not everybody there has computers or tablets or phones. Okay. So we will have the option potentially of a time clock over there. Most employees have computers, like for example, in City Hall, so they can clock in right when they get to their computer. There is also a mobile app um, or through the web browser version. Uh, so there are multiple options of how to log in or clock in. Um, and they are all geofenced is, I think, the proper term. So we can we can determine where employees are clocking in and out. Okay. So, well, uh, this is just going to make the whole system much more efficient. Yes. Okay. And adding on to that, we have multiple pieces of software in play that are doing this right now and outside of fire union employees, we are condensing that down to this technology that ties into the current platform that we generally use within the city. 
That is correct. And uh, HR director would like me to also uh, just mention that compliance is another big piece of this because with how we have people typing in hours, we don't necessarily know when they are working. So from a compliance standpoint, we this will improve that side as well significantly. Thank you. Any other discussion? Administrator Bradley. I just want to bring up one point. Um, <clears throat> we will be bringing forward a couple other modules in the near future as well. Um, we're looking, <clears throat> we're currently going through all of our softwares. So we're going to be proposing um, consolidating more of our softwares. I think we're looking at ultimately three modules that we'd be looking at. And we're estimating to eliminate about 10 different softwares we're currently using. Mm. So this isn't just going to be one. It'll be a couple others, but we'll move them forward as we're ready. Obviously, implementation of this is going to take a while, um, but there will be some other ones in the near future coming forward as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other discussion on this item? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve. I think a motion to approve. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second, then seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. That one is approved. Next up is item number eight. Uh, under items for discussion only, the Department of Public Works Organizational Structure Review with Bold Path Consultants. Yes, thank you. Um, just wanted to bring it to your attention that we're bringing in Bold Path Consulting, which is Patrick Glynn, um, who has a uh, Experience working with the city uh, previously was with Carlson Detman um, and kind of retired from that and ventured out and is doing some consulting work. Um, we worked with um, with uh, Travis, our new uh, DPW director, on how do we best understand and help him get up to speed. Um, I know we consistently are getting um, more staffing requests for our our DPW department. Um, I know there's been some pushback um, in internally, and I know there's a lot of consternation between the department and everyone on um, whether we should add staff or what that structure should look like. So um, we took the approach of let's bring in somebody independent that's completely separate from the whole process and given an evaluation on what their thoughts are. Um, it seems like we've got a lot of support from the staff or at least the superintendents. Um, they were briefed on it last week. They like the idea. They're going to look at a couple different things. So they're going to look obviously at staffing levels, what types of jobs we have, how the department currently functions, and then looking at um, trying to do more career pathing um, within the department. So not only can we bring people in um, and then ultimately move them through their career um, at the city. So they're going to look at a couple different things and just wanted to make sure um, the committee was aware of that. That's going on in case you, you hear anything, but uh, we should hopefully, I think it's about a four month contract, three. So three, uh, what, three to four months is what he put in his estimate. So um, he'll be working with staff starting, I believe next week. Um, so he'll go through a process of interviews and um, working with a new director and existing superintendents on um, kind of how they're using their staffing and what those positions are doing and then come back with a report and analysis and some structural recommendations for us. So, um, and that's uh, about a $36,000 contract. So we've already approved that internally, but just want to make sure you guys were aware that was going on. Thank you for letting us know and definitely look forward to seeing what the results of that are. Uh, yes. Paula Prella. Thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Um, so they will look at the at, at uh, the job descriptions as well. The, yep. uh, in addition to the number of staffing, the job descriptions, and if they need more staff, so that's what they're going to look at. Right? Yep. So they're going to look at um, ultimately workload, and then they're going to look at job descriptions, and then they're going to look at structure. So ultimately, you know, we've we've kicked around internally with the business manager position being vacated. Um, do we look at more of a centralized accounting system as opposed to a decentralized, which we currently have, um, which would be, um, should that position be a, a uh, finance department employee that's stationed at DPW, or should it be a position that's a DPW position? Um, so we're, you know, there's a number of different things we're going to look at, different organizational structures. Um, you'll see it 
across the state it's in uh, different formats all over so you know that's one of many things they're going to look at as they go through this process very good thank you thank you yes any other questions not this one was for discussion only so no action is required but thank you all right thank you uh, with that uh, the next date the date of our next regularly scheduled meeting is August 12th. And with that, we have exhausted our agenda and we'll be looking for a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you.